everybody and welcome to my video getting tidier thank you so much to those of you that have recently started following my decluttering cleaning sorting everything out journey very very much appreciate you being here um, and just before some people kind of click off my video a couple of things I wanted to share with you uh, for August and September any money that I make, and I do make a small amount of money for my charity, will be donated to Natasha's Allergy Research Foundation. So any comments, likes, watching my video for a little bit longer or watching one of my older videos, it will all increase the small amounts of money that I make and I'm going to donate it all to that charity. Now a few people have been saying to me about my loft room and how is that looking, are you keeping up to date with putting washing away, um, etc, etc. And I have sort of told a few people that it's got into a bad way. I have not done much up here at all. I find it really difficult to be maintaining the entire house at the same time. And I've not put washing away for a long time. I've not put holiday bags away in the loft cupboards. And actually there's very little floor space. So I cannot bear to show you the entire picture as um i don't know some youtube channels they'll like show the entire room my excuse is i've got a sloped roof and it won't come out very well but i've shown you a couple of views where you can see my piles and piles of washing of stuff things in my daughter's bedroom that we sorted out that she decided to keep if you've not seen that video, my mammoth overhaul of her bedroom, please do check that out. Um, a lot of you have said that's one of your favourites. Uh, but the, yeah, there's a few things that she definitely wants to keep. But that involves me going through the cupboards, which means I need to declutter the cupboards in order to have space for the things that we've moved out of her room, if you follow that. Goodness me. And it's not that long until Halloween, really. We don't have that much Halloween decorations. Um, I'm big on Easter and big on Christmas, but we do have some Halloween things. So I was thinking about what I could potentially get rid of. Um, so I'll be able to clear some Halloween things out. And I mustn't forget that yesterday, yesterday, last Christmas, I decluttered all the Christmas things. And as some of you will remember, I ended up with a bag, but I took so long to declutter the Christmas things that I knew, and you know how I don't like waste, I knew that if I took it at the charity shop, the charity shop would just put it all in the bin because it was too late. So I decided to put that bag right at the front of the Christmas cupboard. And as soon as mid-end November, I'm going to take it to the charity shop and they will have some things that they can put in their display. And I will get rid of some stuff from my cupboard. That's my plan. That is my plan. I did, as I was sorting around, I did think I found a couple of Halloween things and a couple of Christmas things on the floor. And I thought, goodness me, it's hardly worth putting them away now, is it? Because I'll be getting them out soon. Oh dear. Oh dear. So I don't know how people manage this. The whole thing where they declutter a certain area but they also maintain all the other areas what I need to do is I need to create some sort of hologram of myself and then I could transport the hologram into all the other rooms and be doing all the other things now I'm sure a number of you will be very pleased to see my use of linen baskets so the linen baskets I've actually got three linen baskets at the moment up in the loft room all piled full of washing that needs to be put away if I don't put it away soon, I'm going to need to rewash it because it's going to start getting dusty. Um, but I've got a linen basket full of things that I'm going to put in the bin. A linen basket full of washing that needs to go downstairs because that's not they're not clothes that are worn regularly. And the other linen basket is still full of clothes that I need to put away. You can see that, do you remember way back in one of my videos, I sorted all my drawers out, put everything in really neatly? Yeah. That's not going to happen on this tour. I'm just getting all the stuff and shoving it in the drawers and trying to squash them down as much as possible. And as I go, I'm looking at each thing and deciding, you know how you everyone gets those things in the wardrobe and in their drawers that they never wear because they don't really like them? I've got things like that in my drawers 
and I thought, right, I am going to just get rid of them. If they're things that I never wear, or then I'm really not keen, or they're not comfortable, I'm getting rid of them. So I'm throwing them, any things that I don't want, don't like, up into that brown linen basket. I'll tell you a story about that brown linen basket. I used to have, um, how many jobs? That was my fifth job, I think. Job number five, I used to have a little gardening job um, not far away from where I live. And um, that was an elderly lady and man. And I just used to go uh, once a week. And I just used to do an hour of gardening. And to be honest, I'd always do more because they were so like lovely. But um, the man sadly died. And then after a bit, the lady moved to live with her daughter in Essex. And the son had the job of clearing out the bungalow. And it seemed that the daughter and the son didn't really see eye to eye. The daughter did a lot more for the mother, even though she lived miles away. And uh, the daughter-in-law didn't seem to be that, that great. Anyway, the way that the man cleared out the bungalow was basically putting the majority of his mother and father's belongings into the skip. And as I walked past one day, there were like two linen baskets and a couple of other things. And you know what I'm like with landfill and waste. So that linen basket was in the skip and it was removed from the skip at the dead of night. <laughs> Not really at the dead of night. But I took that and brought it home and now I use it. And what I think is really nice is um, not long after Margaret moved to Essex, um, she she died and the daughter told me that she'd passed away. And now when I think about using my, that linen basket, I think, oh, that was Margaret's linen basket that was. I like that. I know that's a bit of a silly story, but I don't like waste. And so to see that in the skip and the fact that I could do with another linen basket seemed perfectly timed. So I'm sorting through all the washing here and you can see I get I squash it right down but I just want to get want to get stuff away. I want to get clear the floor. So that was my aim. So you'll see me do so much in this room. You're going to be hopefully very impressed. But I'll be honest, there's a lot more that I need to do. I really need to do a lot more in this room. So I started going through some of my books that sit by the side of my bed. As you all know, I don't read that often. I tend to read when I'm on holiday and then I will get a book from the library or I'll buy a book like in local supermarket. But I've got this big pile of books that I have got this wonderful idea that I'm going to read them at some point in time. They are books that I've asked for Christmas and birthday, um, some classics. So I've got Jamaica in Daphne du Maurier. I've got 1984, George Orwell, and a few others. Um, Michael Mapergo, The Elephant in the Garden, uh, which me and my daughter are reading together. And then she decided to finish it off one morning, one evening. So I never knew how it ended. Apparently it is a sad ending, but I said I wanted to read the ending. So I've got this big pile of books sitting next to me and you'll see I stop at one point because there was one book that I picked up from a sale, I think, for 20 pence. And um, it's all about uh, war. Let someone that had written, um, they never knew their father because he died in the war. But he, they, she discovered all these like letters backwards and forwards between her mother and father and she had them all published. And another, which is a true story, of someone doing this massive walk across part of America. So I did end up getting a little bit distracted by having a look at those. There was two books that I was able to get rid of, and the others I've put in a massive great pile. What I really need to start doing is, of an evening, go into bed a bit earlier, because we all need a good amount of quality sleep, and often I go to bed too late. So get into a habit of going to bed earlier, and just sitting in bed and reading a chapter of my book. That's what I should do. That is really what I should do. So you can see I saw out lots of clothes here. So some things that I just put straight into the drawer right at the, by the wall. Other things I put on the floor because I know they're kind of slightly bigger items that need to be squashed down a bit. 
and then you will see me going to various different angles in the room as I sort out different elements. Uh, but yeah, I spent a lot of time going through this. At one point, there's this book, Buying Houses in the Mediterranean. And um, I think I bought it for like 20p or something. I bought it from a charity shop, I think. And I looked and thought, oh, I, I, I want to read that. I want to read that. And then when I started looking at it, it was like, it's like 15 years old. And of course, there's not really much in it that's now relevant. And it tells me things like what type of food they eat in Italy and why the English like Tuscany, all this sort of stuff. And I thought, this is ridiculous. I'm getting rid of it. So I managed to get rid of quite a few things and so loads for the rubbish bin and then loads for charity. And I'm not going to worry about some of these things for my sale. I'm just going to put them in my black bag and they're going to be taken to the charity shop. OK, so I'm going to go through some of your comments now and what amazing comments I've had over the last few days. You're all so lovely. You're all so super and motivational and so helpful and kind to me. All these people that I've never met and yet I'm gradually getting to know you more and more and more. Uh, so Sharon Mummy, so do you remember we talked a little bit about someone just recently started following my channel and asked for my top three tips and I gave top two and I was umming and ahhing about the third. Well Sharon Mummy has replied and um, it's got some thoughts. So hi Emma. I don't know about three tips. Once I get going, I'm hard to stop. Sorry if it's too much. Things I found successful in my decluttering journey. Get organised. Storage is key. You can't get anywhere if you've nowhere to have its place to put it and keep it. I got all my papers I wanted or needed to save into a huge cardboard box. Bought ring binders with the plastic sleeves and made one for each category i.e. certificates, awards, keepsakes like drawings, pictures, cinema programmes, etc. Gift cards in another. But anything you can um, put like with like. Mm. So that might be the top, the third point. That's the top tip. Like with like. Someone said that to me and I find that really useful when I'm umming and ahhing what to do with things. Um, and file them in the binders. No more boxes and boxes of papers all over. And easy to find when needed in the binders. Gifts people can get you, I ask, for promise cards. So they write down on a card like I owe you. This card entitles you to me washing the car three times of your choosing. Or cook a dinner of your choice. Or doing dishes, laundry, taking you for lunch or cinema. A massage, one free hour to yourself, anything you possibly want. And then yes, consumables or ask that you're saving up for one particular thing or event and ask for donations in money towards it. Free standing bookshelves wherever possible. Books are precious and we want to keep them. I don't apologise for books on display. Neatly stored is fine. They're not. Mess, dirty or clutter, they're books. If there's a space that, that's a dead space, like the tops of cupboards or behind doors, back of doors, storage in the bedroom, etc. is fine. There's lots of devices you can buy cheaply that fix to the back of doors, under stairs doors. Oh, is there? I could look into that for my downstairs cupboard. That's a good idea. Under stair door cupboards, doors, over door hooks, etc. All provide that place to put something needed out of sight but accessible. All my Tupperware is in a basket on top of my kitchen cupboards. I can get to it when needed easily along with baskets for seldom used kitchen items, not in everyday use. The free space this provides in cupboards is invaluable. All my tea towels are neatly in a basket on top there too. That's a good idea. That's a good idea because I can all, I always have to hunt around for tea towels because I squash them into the cupboard and close the door quickly. Um, I have a sliding door on my bath panel. It means I can store things under the bath. Really? I didn't even know that was such a thing. That's a good idea. Sliding door my bath panel. It means I can store things under the bath. Cleaning products I have in mine, but any toiletries can go there. Don't forget about outside storage. You can easily get waterproof outdoor storage, small sheds, covering, shelving and lockable too. So anything too big or too many of 
can be stored there, freeing up space inside. Wow, this is really good. Regifting is not a dirty word. If you have something unwanted that would make a great gift, then gift it. The money saved can be put in the bank and see how much saved in a year and use for fun memories instead, knowing you've not only saved money but decluttered and not had to throw away or waste. See? All these things, you, you're, this is so, so helpful. Thank you so much for taking the time to post that. There's quite a few things that I'm really seriously going to think about. Um, I'm going to find out whether I can do that slideable thing on my bath. I could put all my cleaning products under there. What a great idea. Hmm. So, uh, next up, Virginia Goss. Hi, Emma. You are so full of energy and enthusiasm. You can't imagine how very proud I am of you. Oh, you've put yourself out here for credit and criticism from strangers and kept your beautiful personality intact. Oh, what a lovely thing for someone to write. As a retired organiser, my three top tips for anyone just starting or have already begun are Number one, always take 10 to 15 minutes to take a walk through of your home right before you your dedicated declutter time only your everyday spaces decide which area will get your tlc number two one hour is enough until you get those decluttering muscles built bring four small bags or baskets and a timer set the timer for 30 minutes and tackle one area in the space yeah see this is good actually when i said about my top tips i did used to do a lot of this didn't i i used to set my timer and when I was really, really busy and I'd got loads of things on and I couldn't do much, I would just do 10 minutes in the lounge, 10 minutes in the dining room, 10 minutes in the kitchen. Uh, I think that's also good for people that feel overwhelmed with their house. Right, so Virginia Goss goes on. I hope I've pronounced your handle correctly or your name. Right, bring four, yeah. Set that time for 30 minutes and tackle one area in the space working left to right. Place in those bags one garbage, two donate, three another room, and four optional or sell. When 30 minutes are up, restart for another 30 minutes and take care of those four bags. At the end of the last 30, every bag should be brought to its rightful place. Pat yourself on the back and go about your regularly scheduled day. In no time, you'll want to crank that timer just a smidge more than the time before. But the most important key is to take care of those bags. People burn out quickly when first starting, but please be kind to yourself and remember that your decluttered spaces didn't all happen overnight. Hope this didn't make you yawn. No, not at all. That's very, very good comment. Very helpful. Very helpful indeed. I do think that's a very good idea with these three bags. And also, I would recommend making sure the bag is black. So you don't, you're not tempted to look back through it. And also, I do sometimes have to resort things because I put everything in one area and then I have to go back through it and put the things for other rooms and the things for charity. So these separate bags is, is, is really important. I agree. And Brooke follows up on that and says, uh, Regina, Regina has given you wonderful advice. I also concur with her. I'm so very proud of you. Oh, as you mentioned doing your decluttering in 30 minute segments, this leads to my piece of advice. While you are deep decluttering in certain spaces, remember to keep your common areas like your kitchen, dining and lounge room. That way, when you leave the space you're working on, you can feel refreshed to go back into a clean and decluttered space, not feel overwhelmed with what you still need to do. Hmm. OK. Yeah, and that's the bit where I go wrong, isn't it? I do lots of lot spend lots of time in one area, and then you know I haven't done any washing up for a whole day. Next comment is from Sarah Keem. Thank you, Sarah. She's put my tips would be start small with an easy area or room. Take a bin bag with you so you can rid of rubbish quickly. I also like grouping items together so you can see what you have and it keeps you organised. In regard to money spent on an item, that money has already left your bank account and there is no chance of getting that value for it as it's no longer new. Don't feel guilty. 
We've all made bad mistakes spending. No one is perfect. I think the best advice I heard on YouTube was to remember you are not that person now. Only now counts. Enjoy your declutter. It really does get easier. Take care. Oh, that's a lovely comment. Yeah, I just it's, it, it is the money that I spend, but also it's I have a big thing about something going into landfill. Um, you know, I, I I've got to tell you this. So the other day I was working for the whole day, and I decided what I'm going to start doing is if I was in the office like before the pandemic hit, and I didn't very often work from home, I would somehow sometimes go into the kitchen have a chat with my colleague. I'd go for a little walk. I would spin around on my chair and talk to the person behind me about the holiday. You would do that in between working. Obviously, you're working from home. You don't do any of that. So what I decided was that I would give myself a couple of very short well-being breaks so that I would go on a little walk. I'd listen to a work-related podcast or, 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 or take a call as I go on my walk. And I'd also get some sunshine at the same time. So I did this on Friday. So I worked out my little circuit, took 20 minutes exactly. I walked really fast. I got my steps in. As I came towards the end of it, I'd also decided to finish up near Tesco so I could pop in and get myself a drink that I wanted. And then as I walked past this bungalow, I could see that, oh, there's a lot of work being done. And there was a massive, massive pile of rubble and concrete and everything ready for landfill because they were digging up all their driving, having new brick weave done. But there, in the pile, I saw three gnomes. And I looked at them and thought, oh, those plastic gnomes are probably owned by the people that lived there, and they probably sat there since, like, the 1950s, 1960s. Look, they did look quite old. They were, only, they were plastic ones, but it looked quite old, with their faces buried into the soil. And the man was in the drive. So I said to him, oh, I said, is this all going to the, in the skip? Or is this all rubbish? He said, yes. I said, are those gnomes for the rubbish? He said, yes. I said, can I have them, please? And as I said that, I thought I could hear my 2,500 followers saying, no, no, Emma, you don't want them. And he came over. He said, yeah, sure, you can have them. So I went round with him and he pulled one out of the soil and I picked the other one up and its its um, hat was smashed. And I thought, I'm not taking a smashed <laughs> unwanted gnome. But two of them are OK. And he smiled like he probably thought, like, oh, where is she going to, what is she going to do with them? Why does she want these things? But I said, oh, I said, that'll save it from going into landfill. So this is a big, my big thing. When you go along to the dump, or I should say recycling centre, and when you go along to the recycling centre, you would not believe the things that people take along and all of it is just crushed. And nowadays, it's not, we don't sort of give it, we don't put our own, we don't you put all of our landfill in our own landfill places in England. It all gets shipped off to some other country that ends up getting paid to have all of our rubbish. And it just makes me feel awful, all that stuff just going into landfill. Uh, so that is my big thing. I hate anything that could have a life, that could have some use going into the bin. Um, and then also, um, I, I, I'm happy with things going to the charity shop because I think, great, the charity can make money. Uh, but then also I'm just trying to do this sale, aren't I? So we're probably not even going to make that much money. For sure, when I do this sale, I will take some photographs and show you what the stall looks like. Because I've now got a, a big pile, a really big pile. And my husband did laugh because I said, Oh, I said, we can do the car boot sale sooner now. He said, why? What do you mean? I said, well, because of your car. Because his car is so much bigger. He was like, ah, oh, right. So my... A second-hand car, but the, the new car to me. So he said, oh, so my new car is now going to be used for a car boot, car boot sale. Oh. Um, we have got a new person who's joined us, Holly. Now, big shout-out to Holly, 
because Holly is pregnant with her fourth baby and um, she's currently suffering with severe morning sickness. Um, I can't think what HG stands for, but I know it's related to, um, it's gone from my mind, severe, um, you know, that makes you, apps. my friend had this and was nearly hospitalised. So Holly's put, good to see videos from someone else in the UK. I've literally just found your channel with this video and I'm loving it. I'm currently suffering with HG with my pregnancy of my fourth baby. So I'm bed bound and I'm going to binge watch your channel. I'm so glad I found you. And so I just messaged back to Holly and said, I'm glad that she's here and I'm glad that she's resting lots. She's out, she says, I'm only in my first trimester and so just constantly sick, which has been so difficult. Thank you for creating a lovely channel. I could listen to you all day. So we all hope the sickness stops very soon for you, Holly, and um, you can get on with the rest of your pregnancy and have an easier time for the rest of your pregnancy. I know how hard that is from a friend. And actually, my, pian my old piano teacher told me that she suffered with that for her third, I think it was her third baby. She was really bad. And they gave her medication, which I think she took once or twice, um, but that made her feel even worse, so she stopped taking it. And do you know she later found out that that medication was, um, oh, that medication that made these babies unwell. So she was so, so thankful she didn't keep on taking it. Right, so I hope you feel better soon, Holly. Um, Brooke Howell said, I'd be curious if anyone that came for the birthday party and doesn't know about your decluttering journey commented about it when I was beginning our decluttering journey I remember that the bathroom would be as April from the space maker method calls it a place to have a quick have quick wins there tended to be lots of little things that had just accumulated that could be purged each video that I see upstairs makes me more and more excited for when you next work on your loft room I wonder if that will be before or after your sale well, Brooke, your wish has come true because you're seeing part of the loft room now, the dreaded mess. And I went back to Brooke and said, no, nobody commented anything about my house, nothing at all. But I do know that my nephew went into my daughter's room and said something like, wow, your bedroom's tidy to my daughter, which made her feel very pleased. Uh, we were looking for something and my father-in-law said, no one can find a thing in this house. Uh, that was soon after he was complaining about the plastic forks that I told you about the other day, because we sat in the garden and he says the same thing every year. Um, and uh, I, I told I told uh, Brooke, because uh, for my, because my daughter's got so many allergies, for one day in the year, for her birthday, there is nothing on the table that she can't in, eat and she can't drink. So we don't buy anything unless it's suitable for her. And there's a lovely spread. There's great variety. And it also makes people think, when people think that she can't eat this and she can't eat that, they see this big spread of food and realise, of course, she can eat all this. Um, but every year is things like, I mean, my daughter wanted burgers one year. She wanted burgers and she wanted um, wedges. So, obviously, if you have a normal diet, you would tend to have a burger in a bun. But due to my daughter's diet, uh, she doesn't tend to have any sort of bread. And a lot of the processed free from bread, uh, it's not really great for your stomach. So, um, the choice is, you, there's burgers, there's wedges. So, you've got your carbohydrate. There's all different salad, crisps, uh, fresh fruit. Um, different cakes and things that she can have, etc., and her birthday cake. And every time, uh, my father-in-law will say, oh, is there a roll for this burger? Is there a roll for this burger? Um, yeah, so you can't win with some people, can you? You really can't. Right, next comment. I've had so many, I'm so lucky. Uh, Carolyn, I just had a thought... I know, scary, I take everything off your counters and stove, your hob. I'm sure it's clean. 
I think I would kickstart more decluttering and organising. So what I just said to Carolyn is um, we had a couple of situations with, we you know we have fish and chips often on a Friday night. We had a couple of situations where the normal place we go were a bit funny about um, cross-contamination. And this one man is a bit of a snot to say the least. And he said, oh, I don't know, that might have other things in it, which actually you're not allowed to say. You've got to provide the allergen book nowadays. But anyway... We just sort of started feeling like, can we actually trust these people? So my husband bought a fryer to make chips and he's tried it out a few times. And the last time he did a great job. They were really nice. The only problem is there's nowhere now for that to be put. So that's why it's sitting on my work surface in the kitchen. So uh, I need to do another sort out of the pantry. That's the big thing. I really do. And then um, Carolyn also says, oh, you don't have a shower curtain in my bathroom. No, I don't have a shower curtain because I've got that glass screen and that fits down so I don't get any water go over. Um, I'm, I don't really don't like shower curtains. Uh, when we go to places and, you know, we stay in places, if I get the shower curtain on me, I really hate it. And although that would be the shower curtain in my own house... So I shouldn't mind. So I, I just, I'm not keen on them. So I've got the glass screen in my downstairs bathroom. And then in the loft bathroom, that's just a wet room. So you just put the shower on and you don't have to worry about water getting anywhere. So I'm now getting towards the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly managed to get through a lot. You can see at this point in the video, I'm showing my daughter a picture that I'm about to put in the bin, uh, which is of me and my sister. I think. Um, it would have been painted when I was, well, probably about 40 years ago, maybe 42 years ago. And as I say that, I start thinking I need to go and get it out of the bin. But the paint is all coming off. Um, my daughter said, well, do you remember, do you remember painting it, mummy? I don't remember painting it, the picture at all. Doesn't mean anything to my sister. And I decided to put it in the bin because it's silly to keep it. doesn't actually say on the picture who it is. I've just guessed it's me and my sister in the rain. Because you can see what looks like massive great mushrooms, I think, were actually umbrellas. So thank you very, very much for watching my video. You can see I got rid of lots. Lots for the bin and lots for the charity shop. Um, I very much appreciate your comments and all the support that you've given me. Um, I find, um, you know, to my shock, how and I never really realised how lovely the people on YouTube are um, compared to some of the other uh, social media, uh, Twitter or Facebook, where everybody always seems to be arguing. It's really so much different. And, and I really love getting to know you and what you've been up to and little bits about your lives. So thank you for sharing that with me. It's really nice. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.